वंस अगेन वेलकम टू केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस बाय विजय कुमार सेठी क्लास ट्वेल्थ केमिस्ट्री वी विल स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर द डी एंड एफ ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट आर डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स व्हाट आर ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन मेल्टिंग पॉइंट एंथेलपीज ऑफ एटोमाइजेशन ऑफ ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट फर्स्ट कम टू दी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द ग्रुप्स belong to 3 to 12 of periodic table are known as d block elements and in these elements d orbitals are progressively filled clear electrons last electron enters in the d orbital and these are placed in four long periods and these periods are 4 5 6 and 7 periods generally they also called as transition elements and there are mainly four series of the transition metals 3d series starting from scandium atomic number 21 to zinc atomic number 30 4d series yttrium atomic number 39 to cadmium atomic number 48 5d series lanthanum atomic number 57 and after that there is a break of 14 elements and then hafnium atomic number 72 to mercury atomic number 80 6d series actinium 89 again there is a break of 14 elements and after that rutherfordium atomic number 104 to copernicium atomic number 112 these are the four series Originally the name transition metals was derived from the fact that their chemical properties were transitional between those of S and P block elements Actually S block elements are metals and if we go from left to right in the periodic table then in P block elements which are on the right side of the periodic table nature of elements changes from metals to non metals clear and these d block elements are in between these s and p that's why these are known as transitional or transition elements but nowadays according to iupac transition metals are defined as metals which have incompletely d subshell clear in completely d subshell either in neutral atom or in their ions this any metal which satisfied this condition is regarded as a transition element zinc cadmium and mercury of group 12 have full d10 configuration in their ground state that is in the neutral atom as well as in their common oxidation states generally the common oxidation state of zinc cadmium and mercury is plus 2 and in these oxidation state they have full d10 configuration hence these are not regarded as transition metals however being the end members of the 3d 4d and 5d transition series respectively their chemistry is studied along with the chemistry of the transition metals various precious metals such as silver gold and platinum and industrially important metals like iron copper and titanium belong to the transition metal series electronic configuration of the d block elements in general the electronic configuration of outer orbitals of these elements is n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 1 to 2 n minus 1 stands for the inner d orbitals and this inner orbitals are also known as the penultimate shell clear d orbital belong to the penultimate shell and outermost ns orbital how where there are several exceptions of this general electronic configuration because of very little energy difference between n minus 1 d and ns orbitals furthermore half and completely filled sets of orbitals are relatively more stable 
that's why again we will get the exceptions of this general electronic configuration for example in 11th standard you have discussed chromium atomic number is 24 its electronic configuration is 3d54 s1 instead of 3d4 4s2 because in this case this d orbital is half filled and this s orbital is also half filled Similarly, in case of copper, atomic number is 29. Its electronic configuration is 3D10, 4S1. Clear? 3D10, 4S1. Note 3D9, 4S2. Clear? Now, this is the part of periodic table indicating the D block elements and F block elements. We can say this. This is the three. First one is called 3D series because electron enters in 3d sub c last electron enters in the 3d sub cell and this belong to the fourth period how can we identify the period the principal quantum number of last shell in this case last shell is fourth that's why this belong to the fourth period in the same way this 4d series belong to the fifth period 5d series belong to the sixth period and 6d series belong to the seventh period now you can say in case of sixth period that is in 5d series after lanthanum atomic number 57 clear yeah? there are 14 elements starting from atomic number 58 to 71 belong to the lanthanoid series clear yeah? these are the f block elements in the same way in the seventh period or 6d series after actinium atomic number 89 there are the 14 elements belong to the actinoids atomic number 9203 in this class we will discuss about detail of 3d transition series or first series of the transition metals that's why you must know the electronic configuration and you have to know the name and symbol of these elements along with their atomic number again this belong to the fourth period because the principal quantum number of a last shell is four you can say from this electronic configuration you can see okay and how can we identify the group number so that's the one shortcut technique if we are having atomic number 21 to 29 here yeah, this technique is only applicable to these elements 21 to 29 then if you sum the digits of atomic number you will get the group number for example scandium atomic number is 21 if you add 2 plus 1 3 it means scandium belong to the third group in the same way manganese atomic number 25 digits are 2 plus 5 7 manganese belong to the seventh group is that clear now how can you remember these elements so there is the mnemonics i have prepared you can also prepare yourself this if we combine these two elements sci we can say this is shakti clear yeah? sci scandium titanium then these three elements vanadium chromium manganese we can say this is vikram okay vanadium chromium manganese then next, iron, cobalt, nickel. This is Fe, Co, Ni. Clear? Fe, iron, Co, cobalt, Ni, Ni, nickel. Clear? And last one is Kujan. That is Cu for copper and Zn for zinc. Shakti, Vikram, Fe, Co, Ni, Kujan. Clear? Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper and zinc. Okay? And if you seen these electronic configuration you can say that is three this is 3d1 4s2 3d2 4s2 this is 3d3 now again see that is chromium this is 3d5 4s1 then manganese 3d5 4s2 again electron enters d sub cell d6 d7 d8 if you come to the copper this is again 3d10 4s1 and last zinc 3d10 4s2 these are the remaining series of transition elements. This is second series, third series and fourth series. It is not necessary to remember these names. Okay. This belong to the fifth period. This belong to the sixth period. This belong to the seventh period. 
physical properties of transition elements. Nearly all the transition elements display typical metallic properties such as high tensile strength, ductility, malleability, high thermal and electrical conductivity and metallic cluster. The transition metals are very much hard and have low volatility. Low vol volatility means high melting point and boiling point. Their melting point and boiling points are high. The high melting points of these metals are due to the involvement of a greater number of electrons from N-1D in addition to the NS electrons in the interatomic metallic bonding. Actually, in metallic bonding, not only outermost shell electrons, that is NS electrons, even N-1D electrons also take part. More the involvement of number of electrons, more stronger the metallic bond. You can say this metallic melting points of these transition elements in this graph. Okay, In any row, it may be 3D series, 4D series or 5D series, the melting points of these metals rises to a maximum at D5 except for anomalous beam value of Mn and Tc and fall regularly as the atomic number increases. Up to D5, number of unpaid electrons increases. That's why melting point will also increase. This again you can say bar graph, melting points of the fourth period of transition elements. The number of unpaired D electrons increases up to the middle. So metallic strength increases up to the middle. The dip in melting point in Mn can be explained on the basis that it has stable half-field configuration. So electrons are held tightly. So delocalization is less and metallic bond is weak. Enthalpy of atomization. Clear? That is, this is also known as the enthalpy of sublimation. Solid metal is converting into the its atomic form in gaseous state. Clear? Whatever the heat we supply, that is known as the enthalpy of atomization. And they have high enthalpy of atomization. Again, this enthalpy of atomization depends on the strongness of metal bond. Clear? You can see same pattern as in case of melting point. The maxima 8 above the middle of each series indicate that one unpaired electron per d orbital. Clear? One unpaired electron per d orbital is particularly favorable for strong interatomic interaction. Meaning, more the number of unpaired electron, more stronger the bond. Okay, and more stronger the bond, more the enthalpy of atomization. In general, greater the number of valency electrons, stronger is the resultant bonding. Dear student, thank you. Subscribe my channel.